Welcome back on Dynamod. Today I want to propose you a video about uh, a focus about the auxiliary objectives that you can find in the channel handbook 2020. I want to remind you that in the description you can find the playlist and the boxing about the channel handbook 2020. So now we can begin to see what there is inside these rules that are really quite interesting. And one thing that is quite interesting is that if in the normal playing you had to use two auxiliary objects in that so that in case of throw you can have a sort of result uh, that can result in your minor victory so it becomes really quite interesting about the tournaments uh, the things becomes really quite more interesting and I talked uh, about this also in my unboxing about uh, the general handbook 2020 and it's that in all the games that you have you can't repeat the auxiliary objects and you have take three of them each game so it means that you have to play nine objectives during the tournament that you can use. And if you think about a match of two days that are usually are five or six, it means that you'll have to use 15 or 18, so all in the last case, the objectives, auxiliary objectives that are available. So planning when and how to use them, it's quite important. Moreover, because they are useful only in the case of throwing. So it's really quite handy and really quite interesting. Obviously, if you win, you're not interested about, but are you so sure that you can win? It can be really quite interesting. Moreover, because even if you are not going to win, you draw or you lose, it could be used such auxiliary objects to determine maybe some back result so that you can distinguish yourself from the other results. So it becomes really quite handy. So really pay attention to such auxiliary objects because even if they are not the main goal, they can be really a quite important goal. Moreover, if you think, for example, again about the tournaments where you can have a major victory and to distinguish which one from the ones that had the same result of major victories, had the auxiliary objects as distinguished so they can win a bit more. So they can be really quite amazing. There is a specific about uh, the tactical objectives, about the units that I can conquer them. And it's that there is a distinction on some objectives between the starting point when you start the battle of the unit present on the field and the one that are the reserve or the summon back or the unit that are mixed back on life. So those type of unit, in the case they are referring in the tactical objects to the starting army, are not considered. So the one that comes after the starter army we have, so they are not considered about using, about conquering the uh, objectives. So pay attention to such distinction in the case that we see. And the first of the auxiliary objects that we see is the aggressor that let you complete these auxiliary objectives if you control all the objectives wholly within your opponent territory. This does not include the objectives located on the borderline of a territory. So it can be quite easy, but you have a problem to begin with. Your opponent knows that you have such auxiliary objectives, so he'll will prevent that you can conquer them. So you have to try to distract it and send to conquer the objects that can be useful for both the mission that your battle plan that you are going to realize and also for these auxiliary objects. And in some mission can be quite easy because you have only one or two to control. For others, it can be more. So you have to be able to conquer at the same time all the objects. So pay attention, moreover cause, you only need to do this one time, not to conquer them at the end of the battle or so on. So you can really appreciate such tactical one. And I think that it can be used also in a way that you can use as a distraction way so that you make concentrate your opponent to such one. And at the same time, you realize other options, other objectives and so on. So eventually think also like this, uh, this objective. The second one is assassinate. That says that when you reveal this auxiliary objective, your opponent, it's the opponent to choose, must pick one unit in their starting army, that is a hero, 
and you complete this auxiliary objective if the tiro is lean before the end of the battle. So remember that uh, it can be useless if your opponent doesn't have any hero in the starting uh, army, so pay attention to such thing. And moreover, it can give you quite a really hard to take uh, as model, so pay attention when you pick this one, because choosing the army that you are going against to use this uh, objective is really quite important, because some heroes are a bit difficult to kill eventually, so pay attention. And then we have debate that say that when you reveal this auxiliary objective, you must pick one friendly unit in your starting army, so from the ones that you begin with, and you complete this auxiliary objective if that unit is destroyed by an enemy unit, doesn't mind that you sacrifice it, uh, make, uh, making it exploding or so on. Uh, and so it refers also about uh, the units I think that are killed by the endless pass. So pay attention to such thing. So it's uh, really quite interesting because you have to do it even quite fast because you have to make it killed as unit before the end of the third battle round. So it means that uh, your opponent will have uh, to choose if uh, maybe that unit has to be killed or has to be avoided. So it can be really quite a way to control, even if uh, it's not so, I can say, normal, <laughs> but uh, it's quite fun as uh, objective, because uh, if you think about this, uh, you can force uh, your opponent to kill it uh, if you choose a unit that uh, yet has uh, to be killed, because uh, it's uh, really quite dangerous for your opponent. So it can be really quite uh, interesting. And then we have cornered that let you complete this auxiliary objective if you have two or more friendly unit within three inch of the same enemy hero at the end of any turn. So it's really quite simple because you only need to move two units to cross combat with a hero. So it's really quite interesting because it's quite simple. Or the opponent avoid completely that hero goes in cross combat or it's not something quite difficult to realize so i think that it's one of the jolly as objectives that you can play with maybe against the scavenger you can have a problem but surely it can be really quite a simple but fast way to realize an actual objective and then we have a little difficult one that it's defend that let you complete this auxiliary objective if there are no enemy unit wholly within your territory at the end of the battle. So remember, it's at the end of the battle that it mind and they have to be not completely, not wholly within. So if even some model are out, you can avoid and make this objective true. So it means that you can try to make that unit move out uh, even using the cross combat so that uh, you can use it with the massing of the opponent uh, so that uh, it can't move uh, closer and all inside uh, your territory. It's uh, really a not uh, an easy way to have this one because we have a lot of units that can enter from the different part of uh, the field and so on. It's uh, not something quite simple. But at the same time, it's something that I find it fun because it means that you have to really pay attention and control the last turn, knowing that sometimes you don't know when the battle will go to finish. So I think that it can be really quite a suppression to your opponent because it has to try always to have something in your territory completely wholly within your territory. So not bad. And then we have one that it's not so easy as it seems, that it's domination, that let you complete this auxiliary objective if three or more enemy units are destroyed in the same turn. So it means that you can use, either for your turn or the one of your opponent, different types. In your turn you have all the phases available, so the hero phase, where you can use, for example, some endless spells, some spells, or some ability or so on, you have your shooting phase, that it's always useful. The charge phase is also 
the battle shock phase, so you can use all the turn to destroy these three units. The problem is that they are free and it's not so simple sometimes. So pay attention and you can really evaluate this because if the opponent are going to use small units, it's easier to realize than the bigger ones. But you can really have fun in having this because you can a bit press your opponent killing three units in different ways. So maybe you can damage the units in different turns before and then concentrate to realize such objectives, destroying the units in the same turn. So you can really plan a bit about this objective eventually. And then we have Grudge, that more than Grudge, I think that it's an hunt, because you have, when reveal this auxiliary objective, pick one enemy hero in your opponent's starting army and one friendly hero in your starting army and you complete this auxiliary objective if that enemy hero is slain by an attack made with a melee weapon by that friendly hero so it means that you have to consider first that uh, that starting army of your opponent as a hero then you have to pay attention that that enemy hero can be killed by your one because it's not so simple sometimes then you have to reach the aim hero because uh, the problem is that uh, the opponent can block your hero or can hide his hero then you have also to consider that it has to be killed by anything else than the melee weapon of your one so you have to pay attention that uh, you have to kill with your hero in melee nothing else so no magic no shooting, melee. So you have to pay attention because it's really quite, uh, I can say, blunted. So you can do only in that way. So it's not so simple as it can feel. But surely it's a lot of fun. And then we have a hunter that say that you can complete this auxiliary objective if all the leader units in your opponent's starting army, so at least not the one that arrive later, are destroyed before the end of the battle. So you have to really hunt and your opponents know. So you have to pay attention that the opponent doesn't run away with some heroes, some leaders, sorry, that are hiding so that miss at least one and you can't reach. And sometimes it's even a bit hard to kill some of the leaders of the opponent. Maybe you don't need to conquer the major victory and so on. So it's not always so easy as it can seem. Surely you have to plan when you reach to use this objective based on your opponent army because sometimes the leaders are fragile and easier, sometimes are really quite hard and you have to sacrifice a lot to reach such auxiliary objective. And then we have Invader that it's really quite interesting because you can complete this auxiliary objective if at the end of the battle, the problem here is when the battle ends, but okay, you have more friendly units wholly within your opponent territory than your opponent has wholly within your territory. So here basically, or you are able to control a lot your territory, or if you have more units and you are able to make them moving stealthily in your opponent one. So I think that uh, it can be really quite interesting for armies uh, that has a lot of units because uh, they can be doing this uh, easier. But surely it's something that uh, it can be really quite uh, interesting. Moreover, because they have to be wholly within. So ambushes and so on are really important uh, to apply. And I think that in this case, uh, armies like the Seraphon, the one about the Starbones that can create new units, uh, are, uh, I think, uh, a bit more easier to reach uh, this one. And then we have marked for death. Let's say that when you reveal this auxiliary objective, your opponent must pick one unit in their starting army, that it is not a hero, and you complete this auxiliary objective if that unit is destroyed before the end of the battle. Here, the problem is that uh, it's your opponent to have control on which unit you have to destroy. So you can hide, you can make that you have to sacrifice a lot to kill it, and so on. So 
it's uh, really quite one of the more problematic ones because uh, it's not so simple to realize time because if you have a massive unit or really a hard to kill one you have uh, to pay attention to it or if it has maybe one unit that uh, simply doesn't value a lot and can be hide under uh, something or something where you can't reach you have the problem that you can conquer this uh, auxiliary object so it can be really a double-edged way for you to give uh, this auxiliary objective as the one that you choose. And then we have mass panic that maybe it's uh, one of the easier, not so simple, but easier ones, because you complete this auxiliary objective if two or more different enemy units fail a battle shock test in the same battle round. Because uh, I say that it's simple, because you have all your turn and your opponent turn to make do this. Moreover, you have also to remember that you have a lot of armies that has a debuff for the bravery of the opponent. Think to the Legend of Blood, for example, because it has a lot of maluses, but also it's so for others. So it's not so, I can say, difficult to reach, because you can damage a lot, two or more units in the same turn, and assault them and so on, not kill them, because otherwise they don't fail the battle shock test, but make them suffer a lot of wounds, a lot of losses, so that it's enough to make them make and fail the battle shock test. So it's not so difficult, but at the same time you have to pay attention to be able to concentrate the fire, the combat, your attention to at least two different units and make them fail so that you can have a lot of losses but not destroy them at the same time. So you have to be really equilibrate in doing this to conquer this op tactical objective. And then we have overarm that say that you can complete this auxiliary objective if an enemy hero is slain by an attack made with a melee weapon by a friendly battle line unit. Okay, it's easier if you're going to play, for example, for the Flesh Eater Kurz, the Crystal Gore, because you have the Terror Geist as button lines, so easier. Or even if you think about the Son of the Gargans, where you have the Giants that are button lines, because they can really do on melee. Otherwise, you have to use massive units, for example, Skeletons and so on, that can really amass a lot a lot of attacks against a hero and kill some massive in a lot of melee weapons but it's not always so easy because it's not for the battle line units always being able to be able to kill the heroes the enemy heroes the advantage is that it's an enemy hero so it's not related about choosing the hero so at least you had that advantage but you have uh, to consider which one of your units uh, or as battle lines are able to do such auxiliary objective. And then we have pillage that say that when you reveal this auxiliary objective, you must pick one turn future wholly within your opponent territory, and you complete this auxiliary objective if you have a friendly unit with a combined wound statistic of five or more within three inch of that turn future at the end of any battle round. This auxiliary objective cannot be completed using a unit that was set up on the battlefield in the same battle round. So it means that if you are going to use some ambushing units, they can do the conquering of this objective from the next battle round, not the one that they arrive. So you have to remember this, but in a way you can make them do the things that they have to do and then retreat and conquer. Moreover, you have to pay attention because you can use this as a bait, as a trap, because your opponent knows that you selected that shining element. So you can use this in a way that your opponent has to sacrifice some attention to keep some forces, to keep that terrain future safe, and you can use it to make it other parts, for example, other objectives or other secondary auxiliary objectives to your usage so it's also a way this one because you take this as a way to absorb part of the strength of the army force of your opponent so it can be also this one and remember that it has to be done at the end of the battle round the conquery so it's better if that battle round you have 
the second turn so that you know that you can move the units in the range and you are safe that no one can bring you back so it's also something that you have to take note and now we have prey on the weak where you have to complete this auxiliary objective killing all the battle line in your opponent starting army so it's uh, a problem this one because uh, you have to have that the opponent has battle lines in its starting army and it's not so simple to kill all the battle lines because minimum they are free so it's a problem this one because uh, your opponent need only to see one model of one unit to forbid you this auxiliary objective and uh, at the same time uh, it's not so easy to kill uh, all the battle lines because often they are the most common part in an army so it's not as easy as it can seem and then we have priced possession that it's most suitable for mages and similar one because when you reveal this auxiliary objective you must pick one friendly hero with an artifact of power in your starting army and you complete this auxiliary objective if that hero has not been slain at the end of the battle it means that uh, your opponent will try to kill it and you can use your own hero as a bait at the same time it's better suited for the ones that can cast can do things can fire staying far from the opponent because at least they don't have the problem to suffer maybe from uh, some ambush and so on so you have to pay attention and eventually you can hide that model because it has to survive so it's uh, maybe one of the easiest to do but uh, it requires that you pay attention on how you use uh, and which model you choose to do such role and then we have says ground that it's really quite similar to pillage in some way it's easier but has one critical aspect to take note in fact when you reveal this auxiliary objective you must pick one terrain feature that is not within your territory so in the middle or territory of your opponent and you complete this auxiliary objective if you have one or more friendly units within three inch of that terrain feature at the end of the fourth battle round the problem is that it has to be at the end of the fourth battle round so it means that if you have the fourth battle round second turn it's easier because you can move and be more sure that it can't happen anything that forbid you for conquering this auxiliary objective but it also means that the opponent only needs to control that terrain feature in the fourth battle round or forbid you to be within the three inch in that battle round so it's really a game to control when not at the end of the battle and so on so that you can't know for sure when it happens and so on. both of you know exactly when it happens so it can be really quite a carnage eventually for this one so think about this because it's not as easy as it can seem but at the same time it's maybe one of the best to realize because you can use the ambush other than the pillage where you were forbidden to use the setup from the ambushes to conquer so there are a lot of interesting ways to see and so you have really to plan how to use this objective so pay attention and then we have territorial that say that when you reveal this auxiliary objective you must pick one objective on the battlefield and you complete this auxiliary objective if you control that objective at the end of two consecutive battle round so in some way it's uh, not a problem there are a lot of ways that uh, an objective can uh, stay in your keeping for two consecutive battle round it's one of the easiest so I don't think that the opponent will have a lot of ways uh, to control but it, you, it's also true that your opponent knows for sure which one is the one so he can simply try to keep you away from the control so or charging or killing the units that are close and control the objective because remember that only one unit can control the objective so if it kills that unit even if you have another one close you lost the control of the objective so and you had to do this for two battle round consecutively so 
pay attention because uh, it's easiest but you don't have uh, to low your guard about. And then the last one that it's vengeful counter that it's really quite tricky because you complete this auxiliary objective if any enemy units are destroyed in the same turn that any friend units are destroyed. Why I say that it's tricky? Because it doesn't mean the order that you have to do this. So it's not that if your unit is destroyed, then you destroy the opponent one. They have to be destroyed in the same turn. So it means that you can destroy with magic, shooting and so on an opponent unit and then send your unit to be destroyed by the opponent. Maybe because you do some charge on that it's a sacrifice one. So it's not so simple as it can seem and it's really quite interesting. I think that it's one of uh, the easiest to do because it happens quite often that uh, during the combat two units are destroyed uh, in the same turn, both your one and one of your opponent. So it's not so problematic. Surely you can even try to adjust uh, and make that uh, it happens uh, for sure when you want. So what to say about this auxiliary objective? I think that they are really quite interesting and I hope that they will become main objectives. So you have still the control of the objective, but this one can combine with the control of the objective, really calibrate so that you have to reach also these objectives that gains point that can you give a major instead of stabilize which referred about a minor victory when you need because uh, I think that they are really quite interesting. It's also true that uh, I think that it's better done about such thing in tournaments. Because in tournaments, uh, okay, you can distinguish in case of throw or uh, the same amount of points uh, in case of the major victory itself, uh, which one is better than the other because it has more auxiliary objective realized. But at the same time, I think that they can be really a uh, distinguish so that they can save a lot. So I think that it's not so bad and they can gain a lot of uh, amount of interesting option because uh, you can really have a lot. But even now as they are, because they can make a sort of separation. So you had the same point, the same result, but the objectives that you conquer, the auxiliary ones, determine if you are better or worse than the other because you gain three and the other only two. So you had the same result, but the other it's a little better. It's in a way good it's a good way to realize simply i think that instead in normal game it's uh, better to have them uh, free but also true that the normal games uh, you go in only to apply really the easiest one so it's not so good so i think that for now as they're done they are okay but i think that they can work more on this so realize that uh, so that at least one on, uh, if you realize two, one can be used for the main. There are a lot of combinations that I'd like to try, because it's a bit of pity that they come on use only in case of throwing. So it's a pity in that case. So from Dino Mode, it's everything. I invite you to put a like on this video, to subscribe to the channel, to ring the bell, and to comment the vi this video if you are interested in something about this video or you want to suggest me some arguments for other videos. I hope to see you again to the next time.